welcome to part one of the Becoming a Leader series. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our first webinar, Thinking About the Things that we can talk about that would be possibly the most benefit to you. I would thought about picking up the theme of getting your own software for winning, and that's why I've got Winning 1.0. It's kind of like a software, because as we know, it takes two things to win. You need a vehicle, and you need a driver, which in your life is going to be you. See, it's the combination of those working together that's going to cause you to win in life. And it's like a computer. A computer's got to have software. You can have the greatest computer in the world, but without the right software, you're not going to be able to get the job done that you want. You know, this whole thing about vehicles and you, it's like winning the Kentucky Derby, got to have the horse, got to have the rider. You want to win the Indy 500, got to have the car and the driver. In life, you've got to have your opportunities, the people you have relationships with, the jobs you do, things like that. And it's a combination of those opportunities you have. That's like the computer. But you're the one who's got to be making the decisions, see? And if you're not programmed for winning, you're not going to have the success you can have. You influence. We talk about magic. See, the magic in these things comes down to you. You're the magic. And anything you come across in your life, is going to be something, your involvement, you're going to influence how it turns out. There's just no way of getting around it. And you're going to make decisions based off what you have in your mind, what kind of knowledge, insight that you have. That's why it's important to have good foundations, good exposures, what's true, what's not true, what works for you. So you power whatever situation you're in by the energy you add. And... You're the one, things never go right all by themselves. You become the thermostat in the situation to control the environment, to control the results. And so this has to all come from you. So it seems like we'd be on the right track to spend some time talking about helping you get your own foundation for winning. I'm looking forward to talking about it because... The more you focus on these things, the more you clarify the issues, and the more things can jump into your mind that can help you improve. So let's take a look at it and see. See, the issue is we all start here. We have our dreams, our want-tos. We look around. We have those things inside us that we want to do. In other words, one version or another, we want to do it big. We want to make our mark. Now that, of course, is going to have time, but what is the problem? We all know just having those doesn't cause it to turn out. Why is it that people roll around through life looking up here, always looking up, why can't I get off the ground? Why am I not good enough? And others are able to do it. Well, it has to do with some ingredients. First of all, for you to get to where you want to go, you've got to do a lot of work, but you've got to be able to develop you got to be able to improve. You're, none of us are good enough to do what we want to do in life when the idea pops in our mind. You know, an eight-year-old kid enjoys playing football. Mom, I'm going to, Dad, I'm going to play in the NFL. Sure you are, son. Well, that might turn into a future NFL all-star, but he's got to go through years of development and focus. Same thing with being a you know, piano player, swimming, uh, gymnastics. All of these things, anything that you're that drives you, that turns you on, excites you inside, you're not good enough to do it at the beginning. You've got to develop. Now, where does that development come from? It comes from a few people are able to do it by themselves or to get way up the ladder by themselves, but it helps if you get in a hothouse-type environment, like a greenhouse where you grow plants. You get them up to a certain size on their own. It's where you have an environment where you can excel, where you can grow, you can make mistakes, you can be encouraged, you can learn. 
And then you have mentors, people who coach you along the way. Those are the two big keys. But here's the problem a lot of people have. They'll get in the environment, and they'll get the mentors, and then they start fighting. You know, they, they turn into their own worst enemy, make excuses. They blame others. When things go wrong, they get totally off track. But that's why we keep saying, no matter what kind of advantage you have, environment, mentors, you've got your dreams, you want to do it. The thing that makes the environment, the mentors, the dreams all come alive is you. You're going to be the make or break issue. And so that's why we want to focus in on winning 1.0, getting a game plan for doing, you know, for being successful and taking charge, making decisions. It's not a one-time decision. It's got to come from you. You're the one who calls the shots. Now, again, we say the magic is you, in you. The issue we need to realize is we're all born in a cocoon. Another book I'm writing on the top 10 myths about winners is we start off talking, we're all born in a cocoon. And inside this cocoon are all of the, we get our opinions, our viewpoints, our attitudes, our expectations of what we can, think we can get in life. Initially, are all formed from the environment we grow up in. But when you're a little child, you're a baby, you're in your house, you don't realize you've got a limited exposure to the world. It's mainly your mom, your dad, your relatives, your friends. And what happens from this is you get out on your own and you start setting out in life, you find out, of course you know there's things you've got to learn, but you start to realize, well, hey, maybe there's some limiting beliefs there too that I've got to unlearn before I can start making the progress that I want to make. Here's a couple of keys. Once you start moving forward in your life to stay on track, maximize your progress, here's a couple of things. First of all, write down your lessons. It's your life. You have your skills, your situation, your time in life. Write down what works for you so you will remember it. It doesn't matter what's worked for other people. You've got to find out what works for you and then pass it on to people who are coming up behind you. Pass on what you learn. This allows you to remember it. Because who wants to keep learning the same lessons over and over again? You want to write this stuff down. You want to be specific. When you're specific, then you can explain it. When you start talking, that deepens your understanding of it and makes it a part of you. Over here, you may have got lessons from other people. You learn, then you install them in your life. You find out it works. You write it down. Now it starts to become yours. It's not somebody else's idea that you tried on for a while, someone else's tool, someone else's illustration or phrase. It becomes yours. And as you talk, you explain, you pass it on to others, it buries it deeper. It becomes part of you. You start to own it. You don't want to be just things you learn and you're parroting back. You want to learn it. That's what they tell actors. When you're an actor, part of the acting class is don't just say the words. You know, when they point to you, director points to you, action. You don't just blah, 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 blah. You don't just say in the words. No, you've got to feel it. You feel that thing and you're ready to go. Then you say it. You don't just like blurt it out because I've memorized the words. I'm supposed to say these words because then it becomes phony. But you've got to give yourself a chance to take that dialogue and make it you. How would you say that? When you feeling that thing, and then you say it, and it comes from inside you. That's the difference about this stuff. And that becomes all of these things that you move forward in life, learn th techniques of winning. You're going to be using these over and over and over, and you want to make them yours, not just things you're parroting back or you're copying from other people. And this so it helps you remember. It helps you to stay inspired, excited, because you keep seeing the power of this stuff. And it also keeps you on track so you can keep moving up. See, once you find a winning track, you want to stay on the winning track. You don't want to get off track. So that's a couple of things to think about as we move forward. And then the other thing to think how this thing takes shape, because it's important to get your viewpoint. 
your perspective. That's what we're kind of looking at right now. Your, all of life looks like, have you ever seen a baby at the bottom of the stairs? As soon as they can stand up, they crawl over, they stand up next to some stairs. If there's a stair there, what does it do? It hikes, its, it wants to, may not be tall enough, may not have the strength flexibility yet, but it's trying to hike that leg up. What does, the thing, what does the baby want to do? That baby, as soon as they see stairs, they want to climb it. Hey, this is life, folks. This is where you are. You see your dreams. You want to climb it. It is in you. You don't have to come up with it. It's follow your natural curiosity, your natural compulsions, your natural infatuations, the things that turn you on. Those are in there for a purpose. You're not supposed to, now of course, assuming it's legal, you're not supposed to feel bad about this. No, it's supposed to, these are the things that as you pursue it, it's going to release that greatness. That's in, there's a reason you have the desire for this stuff. And you should release it. And it's the same thing. People criticize, like if you go out there, uh, like a musical instrument. As soon as you sit down on the piano, the guitar, the violin, you know, you're plunking around, you sound crazy, you sound terrible. That's not satisfying. You want to get to where, at least for a few pieces of music, you can do it the way the professionals do it. You know, you want to play it well. You want to improve. You don't immediately look and say, how can I play chopsticks on the piano? That's my highest uh, goal. You want to play something that sounds good. You want to play like something on the radio that you've heard. You know, you want to play the exciting songs, the fun songs. Well, that's all of life. In life, you get in a job, you want to do well at it. And the extra effort is ultimately what gets you to head. When people play golf, they're always criticized. Well, you got your handicap to a 20, and now you want a 15. Now you're playing at a 10, and, and now you want to get to single-digit handicap. Well, that's what makes it exciting. It makes it fun. That's all of life. Improving keeps the fun factor up, keeps you stimulated, keeps you interested. And it keeps you at your best where you're not just going through the motions. It allows you to reach your potential. Those are the things to think about as you go through this thing. Follow the things that turn you on and don't feel bad if you're motivated for more because you're supposed to be motivated for more, to get better, to improve. That's really what winning is all about. Winning is not everybody plays baseball, wins the World Series, everybody plays football, wins the Super Bowl. It's just that you're improving in your chosen profession, sport, activity. You're getting better. The better you get at it, the more fun it becomes to do. So those are things to think about. And when I went up to North Carolina in 1978, 1979 was the... uh, first full year up there. It was just me, all alone, starting a new business, a scared in the world. Have you ever felt like that? That's the way we all are anytime we start something new, a new job, a new sport, a new activity, a new relationship. You're all alone. You're full of fears and question marks. Will I be good enough? Am I going to be able to get functional fast enough to be able to succeed, or is this going to be a waste of time? And the thing you got to realize, bigger the risk, bigger the reward. If you don't have those thoughts, you're not doing anything really worthwhile to begin with because there's no, you're not taking any kind of risk. So there I was. Now here's what I did. You got to put yourself to work. When you're starting in anything new, even if you've got a boss, That's no excuse for managing yourself. You've got to put yourself to work. This is 40-something years old. This is my activity from 1979. I was sitting in an office, a little tiny office, and it was just me and the world. And I was in a sales situation. I was attempting to build a marketing team, a sales team. But in the beginning, I was going to have to make sales to support myself while I was looking for recruits, which meant I had to... Make appointments. Now, before you make appointments, you've got to call. You've got to find people. You've got to get them on the phone. You've got to make the appointment. Then you've got to keep appointments. And then hopefully you get some results. You might make a sale, etc. But all this activity on the front end, lots of that led to all of this activity up here 
before it ever turned into any kind of income down here. I was after the income. I'm sitting in my office and I'm saying, I need to make money. I need to make money. I need to make money. That wasn't doing me any good. And so what I really had to do was I had to put myself to work. If you can't manage yourself, you're never going to be able to manage anybody else. And the better you can manage yourself, the more people you can keep up with. So I created this 3 by 5 card. This was how I put myself to work so I could start making some money and I could survive. I didn't know how it would turn out. I didn't know if I was good enough. I didn't know if I could get good enough. But I knew I was good enough to make some appointments. And so I had a, a jar, an activity jar. And I gave myself like one cent, uh, a penny, for every call I made. And then I put a nickel in if they answered. You know, you got a lot of calling to do before anyone actually picks up the phone. So I gave myself a quarter for actually doing appointments. The idea I was trying to get across is activity equals money in the bank. I knew that I had to somehow convince myself that all of this running around was going to turn into results. And I knew that if I could get myself actually live, see, I never had a chance to make a sale or make money until I got down to this step here. But all of these things I had to talk myself, trick myself, remind myself in that this activity of calling, setting, talking to people, all of that was leading me to money. And so I had, this was my activity jars. I kept all of that up, had it on my desk. Every time I'd make calls, I'd throw pennies in the jar, nickels in the jar, dimes, quarters. And I would see that activity would start to build up in the jar and regardless of how much money I had coming in right there in the beginning, I knew things were going to turn out right because I was doing what I was supposed to do. See, the rule is if you do enough of what you're supposed to do, things are going to turn out right. You're going to get enough positive response to be successful. But I just had to focus on, on what I could control, what I was supposed to do. Not whether they were saying yes or no, they were answering the phone, they showed up for appointments, no. My job was to keep marching on, filling up my activity jar, and if I did that, eventually, that's going to start turning into paychecks. It didn't happen very fast, but as a result, I had 160 contacts in January, and that's not a huge number for 30 days, but some people do that in a week. But you don't have to be a superstar if you just work. Then I had 36 interviews. That's a little averaging, a little bit over one a day. I had three recruits, not a great turnout, and those three weren't that particularly outstanding, but it was a start. And then I did five proposals, and I had one sale. So I had five people who said they wanted a proposal. I made one sale. And actually, two out of my three recruits were not even in our market. They didn't even buy the product themselves, which is almost automatic with recruits because they're not going to come to work for somebody if they don't believe product. But I couldn't even get recruits in the market. So I kept going, stayed with my activity jar. Back in February, 120. See, I had some people now that were asking me questions I had to keep up with. A little harder to keep my activity going. 120, 34 interviews. Six, got three sales. Picking up momentum. Not a lot of money, not a lot. Picking up momentum. That's what will happen. Over a month's time, it seems like nothing's happening. But if you keep up with your numbers, from a month to a year to year, you find out you really make pretty substantial progress if you keep working, if you keep your focus on building up your activity. You know, each month I dump the jar and start filling it up again. And so in March, 145, I'm pretty proud of March. March's activity, because I had a lot of people to keep up with, 30, 32, I guess, presentations, and then got 20 of them, see, I'm getting in a better market, 20 of them decided they want to have proposals, we had six sales, so we're starting to pick up a little momentum there, 
what happens, and this is always the case, if you do what you're supposed to do, now this is just 90 days, but then look at my contacts. I had people to keep up with now, but I didn't have time to do calling and everything for myself in months, as much in months four or five, even though I tried to keep it going. See, when I laid this card out, I planned to do it for the whole year. I didn't know if I was going to have to call, you know, 500 people, 5,000, but I knew it was a big number, and so I was going to try and knock it out as much as I could each month. But by the time I'm getting down here in the fourth month of April, we'll look at this. The numbers are going up on things. I didn't even have trouble time keeping up with my card and the last thing I could keep up with was this number here and that is we had 62 proposals we had 62 people who wanted proposals uh, in the month of May where I was struggling to get anybody in January a few months and so at this point I was spending all my time I was the only trained person I was trying to get my best and brightest people trained so they could uh, help me I could build up my management team, and that's what happened. In June, I was able to promote up three full-timers to management help, and actually, by June, my income in June was over $7,000, believe it or not. And all of this started with me alone in the room, all by myself, wondering what's going to happen. Now, let's look going forward. Going forward on this, what did this turn to after a year? So I'm there one year later, January 1st, 1980, whereas one year earlier I'd started with me all alone. Now I had four, I'd expanded to where I had four full-time people. Not bad. See, that little activity thing, when I started, there I am, calling, people are not answering, people are not picking up, people who do set appointments don't show up, I'm in the office, I got every day, every minute of every day, got to make money, money, but I'm sitting in there, I just keep my mind on business. One year later, we're up and we've got four full-time people, I'm starting to build a team, that's what can happen. Now, if you stay on track and you keep compounding, Things can get bigger. You've got to look at building a business or big organization like getting a college degree. Like this is my first year, my freshman year. Didn't know anybody at the college, the business, whatever. But now I had four. I'd expanded. It wasn't just me against the world. But if you stay on track now, here's what can happen. This was one year later. This was starting off January... January 1, 1981, we went out, we had a huge, see, in my first year, we recruited, you know, three and six and two and one. We didn't really have a lot of momentum. We're going up and down. But we started after the year one, as we went from, started off 1980, we got a compounding game plan, a growth game plan. You got to have a plan. I had four people. But now we knew how to put into work, and we started growing. And whereas in this whole first year, we recruited 56 people, in the second year, we learned how to compound. We went from, you know, 7 to 13 to 18 to 32 to 56 to 58, and the summer exploded to 147. And by the end of the year, we had added up. In fact, November, in my first year, we recruited three people in one month. Month of November, we had three. October, November. A year later, we had 300 in the same month, 12 months later. And by the time the year was over, we had recruited a total of 1,800 people. But see, it started with me back here. And these are the things that can happen to you in life. And so whereas a year earlier, I was up to, you know, right here, we had started, we had our four people. Now we had people everywhere. See, you're building a foundation. You've got to keep your eye off where you are and keep yourself to where you're, you're headed. That shows you, it's just an example of what can happen. I was not good enough when I was starting here to be able to run 
and, or, and do the things that I had to do two years later when we had recruited 1,800 people and now I was the leader of a mob of full-timers like this. I didn't have that experience here. And the lessons come fast and furious. And so you don't know what you don't know, but you can, when, there's a lot of things you can learn in a day. A lot of things you can learn in a week and in a month. You add all that up, you can learn a lot and you can accomplish a lot. That's the story of what happened to me and who knows. So that happens That happens in tech, you know, the tech world. That happens, happens in different industries. I don't know if that can happen to you. Odds are probably against you, but it happens. It happens in a variety of industries, and it happens all the darn time. Because people go to work following the dreams that fascinate them, keep their head down, and they at least give themselves a chance for that to happen. Now, here is one year later. We stayed with a game plan. Now, look, how about that? That was the management team. And at this point, halfway through this year, I got promoted up to regional vice president. And in the company, nine months later after being promoted, our team, we went to number one, our training center. And this was in April. I got promoted in July. But, see, when you have a big army like I just showed you, there's not a whole lot of people that can compete with you. However, out of that army, I had promoted somebody else out, and he was number seven in the company. So we had taken the number one and seven spots, whereas, and that was our ninth month in business at the highest level. So these are the kind of things you can look forward to happening to you. And when the convention rolled around, and I still, you can see this, if you look at this close, you see it's kind of beat up this, this plaque. Not an expensive plaque, but this is back in the A. Williams era. I went from a nobody, the little, the little guy with one little circle in an office, no money, all the pressure, putting myself to work with me and my little activity jar, my little pennies, nickels, and dimes. Here's, what, here's where I was two and a half years later. Well, two years and three months later, I was a number one regional vice president of the company, essentially this was the MVP, this was the MVP award in that era out in San Francisco. And so folks, these are the things that you can look forward to happening to you if you focus on doing what you're supposed to do. And, you know, you get in the good environment, you get yourself planted in a good opportunity and then you put your head down and go on the attack and you create the opportunity for your mentors, your environment to pay off for you. What we're talking about is you going from being an amateur to being a pro at making things happen in your life. In other words, all of these little items out there where you're, you're here, you're sitting, and boy, I would love to do that. I'd sure like to get there in a hurry. If possible, I'd like to go, boom, get there immediately. And so where most people go, they wind up getting started. They do a face plant, get discouraged, and that's just another area of their life that was a failure. But it could, it's, it's more than just business. Say that's your business thing. People who fail in business are usually failing in the other areas of their life, too. Not always, but usually. Because the patterns that work, I had a fellow who worked with me one time who was incredible at working with his choir. And he had the choir show up on Wednesday night, and he, when they walked in, they, he had all the material laid out for them, and the robes were already prepared, and the, and the, the songs, and he knew, you know, it, there was, they had a little... Uh, dollar jars to put it in, the people who were late. He had everything organized to a science and how they practiced. It was like a uh, football team. And they had the best choir in town. Well, see, knowing those things put him in a perfect position to be able to succeed in business because he could use those same techniques here. But all of life, if anything you want to do, if it's with your, your, your family, 
you you want to get a vacation. You want to st- smart, start spending more quality family time doing things together. Or you, you want to start getting in shape. All of these are going to re- revolve around, you know, you want to uh, make more of a contribution with your church. Well, what exactly is it? And you've got to get started. And each of these along the way, what will happen is you start off and there's a bunch of unknowns. You're going to have to be able to make that happen. So it's important for you in your personal life, in the Winners Club here, let's start getting specific about what you want to have happen. Because the thing is you want to have happen is chances are it's not happening right now. So you're going to have to get here, get going, and get in the process of learning the things. And there'll probably be 10,000 things and you have to do and learn depending on you know something that you want to really master. But the thing is everything you learn puts you a little closer to it. Everything you learn is something you can use for the rest of your life, not only here, but all of the other things that you're going to want to accomplish too. So I don't know on your goals if let's break these things down. Let's get that you know you can certainly some people, uh, as you get, you know, give yourself time, but you'll get to where you're down to, to every hour. You can keep up with every hour. Every day, you've got the uh, down to a science. But at least you can do the uh, the week and the month and the month and the year. So a year from now, here's where I want to be. But it's not you're not going to start really making it happen until you get specific So the thing that I would encourage you to do, start writing these things down. It's for you. You don't have to show them to anybody. Sometimes it's better if you don't show them to someone. Now, when I went to North Carolina, I did not know what I did not know, but I knew there was a certain amount of work for me to get to where I wanted to go to build my income up, build my business and income. I knew there was a certain amount, a mystery amount of work. And in other words, things I had to do. There's always that portion. If it's learning a language, there's a certain amount of things you've got to do to learn the, the, the words and the practice and the stuff like that. If you want to learn a musical, a certain amount of practicing and certain things that you've got to get fundamentals, you've got to get behind you before you can move on. So there's always going to be certain things I had to do. Now, when that's why I had the activity jar. I didn't know, the mystery was how much. My goal was not to do a minimum. See, I'm trying to get up here. I'm in a hurry. What most people do is like, uh, what's the average? What does the minimum person do? (laughs) It's no good. What's the fastest anyone has ever done? What's the quickest? What's the most progress I can make in a day? And so it's like going to the gym and getting where you can lift weights. Every day you start... But you go in there, and you do as much as you can, knowing that if you stay with it, you're going to be able to do more quicker, more quicker, more quicker, more quicker, and uh, you're just going to get better and better at it. And better means you're going to be more efficient. You can do the same thing in less time. So as far as your progress down, that's why you see a lot of these graphs growth chart graphs, you see people down here, you know, they'll be very slow in the beginning, and then they'll start to get better, and then skyrocket growth. It almost looks like they had overnight success. Well, what was happening down here is they were learning how to get good, and it's usually not a straight line. It's up and down, up and down, up and down, up. but you average it out. See, that's what happens in the early stages. You can't let yourself get frustrated because you're not making incredible progress right from the beginning because you're putting yourself in a position to be able to make incredible progress. They ask Michael Jordan, or they would always say to Michael Jordan, you know, Dean Smith, his coach at Carolina, they said Dean Smith was the only person who was able to hold Michael Jordan under 20 points a game. They were kind of kidding, you know, this... No defender could hold him under 20 points a game, but his coach could, his college coach. And what Michael Jordan said, 
was no. And see, this was his college career. You know, he started off, he was in high school, then he went to college. And he said, no, Dean Smith was teaching me how to score 30, 40 points a game. He wasn't holding me under 20. He was teaching me how to score an average more than 20. See, he understood the perspective, understood what was going on there. And so it's, you'll be able to keep yourself on track if you understand, as Michael Newman told me a long time ago, as I was learning how to ride horses, jump horses, and compete in show jumping, and I was falling off and making a uh, total uh, fool of myself in the process of getting injured and everything else and feeling like a dog. I remember coming out of the ring one time and Michael sitting there in Supreme Rider. He's only like 17 years old, but wise beyond his years. He, he looked down from the horse and said, it'll only get better. I've never forgotten that. And guess what it did? He said, it'll only get better. Don't worry about it. See, that's where the environment, that's where mentors work for you, where you get around where people who understand the process. But you, if you are going to make the most progress, need to get to where you will start writing these things down. Get specific and don't worry that you're not that good at it. You'll get good at it. You'll get better. And so line these things out. Where do you want to go? Get started on the track and make adjustments. Because a lot of these things you learn, you start to move here and say, oop, that doesn't work, let's make a correction there. But if you're not measuring it, you haven't written it down, you don't know what you expect to get done during the day, what you expect to get done during the week. You let yourself slide, you do like a lot of people, their ostrich approach. This is why people go down, 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 down. It's one thing to have a, so you got to be the person who gets discouraged, you don't stay discouraged. you got to be the somebody who gets depressed, everybody gets depressed, but you can't stay depressed. See, winners, everybody goes through these things, but the people who overcome. See, you want to train to become an overcomer. You're not training to become perfect. You become, you're training to become someone who goes through all the experiences everybody else does, but you overcome them, stay on track, get right back on your horse if you get thrown off, and you keep heading to where you want to go. And uh, if you're not measuring, if you haven't been clear to yourself about what is really important to you, what really matters to you, and how fast you want to make it happen, and you keep the, you take an ostrich approach where you just hide from the numbers, make excuses all the time, you're going to lose the benefit. And see, these are the people who just keep, keep going down. It's not that they couldn't. It's just that they handle it the right way. You've got to be able to use the, make the adjustments. Use the environment and the mentors. See, the environment and the mentors are not going to do you any good unless you take advantage of them and stay on track. Because what you're trying to do here, this is the steps of breaking out of your cocoon of where you were born. Let's just say I want to learn how to speak Spanish. Well, in my world, we didn't speak Spanish. So I've got to break out of that limitation. Somebody else was raised in a home where they spoke Spanish by five years old, this kid is, is going to speak Spanish better than I will in my entire lifetime because of the cocoon he or she was raised in. So if you, as you move forward, see, this is all the process of you expanding, breaking yourself out, freeing yourself up, and creating more options for yourself. Because again, like we said, every time you reach a huge goal, it opens up doors, more options. Now, there's a whole range of great things you can do because you moved yourself up to this level. And uh, so there's a lot of things you learn as you go up this thing. One of the big things, and you see this played out on television, on the golf tournaments, with even big Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, his big goal in life is 18 majors. He wants to win more majors than Jack Nicklaus in his career. He's already at 79 tournaments. He just won his last one. 79 tournaments, 14 majors. And he wants to get those last. But since he's been eight years old, 
he's had this target in his mind. So he measures, he's very clear to him, he measures everything pretty much by majors. He, of course, he loves winning tournaments, but what makes it a great year for him is if he won a major during that year, and they have, there's four majors every year. But what happens is it's been 20 majors. It's been uh, four or five years or longer since he's won a major. And this is just unheard of for Tiger Woods. So what you see him, because these are so important to him, where he gets in, and in these tournaments, he may play great, but then when it comes on Sunday or right at the end, he's been blowing them left and right because he gets... When he starts to make mistakes, he, he has a problem handling the grief. And so you've got one of the big problems is handling the fact that you're not perfect. You want this so bad, just like Tiger. He wants this so bad. He's worked so hard. When he gets started, even when he's in a position to win, as soon as a mistake or some kind of imperfection comes in, he just falls apart. And as a result, he winds up losing on Sunday a tournament if he had just relaxed, had just given himself a chance and not expected himself to be perfect on Sunday, he could have come, he could come in and have won a lot of these recent majors that he was in a position to win. But he's in the process of learning how to handling, handle his emotions. See, emotions... They run their own course. You know, that's your autonomic nervous system. That's adrenaline. It has a life of its own. But you've got to learn how to handle that stuff. Keep a perspective. You've got to say, learn to say when it goes wrong, hey, that's a disaster. We had a slump. We made a mistake. But it's not the end of the world. We'll win anyway. We'll overcome. You get so close to your goal, and then you start sliding down. And you say, yeah, here's where you've got to keep perspective. Yeah. We may have lost a little time, might have had a little slump. It might be the end of the tournament. I might have had a four or five stroke lead. Now I'm down, I'm barely leading. Or, you know, I've got, got to go, but I'm starting to starting to lose it. You say, look, look how far I am. Okay? Look, look how little is left to go. Forget about this little, this little imperfection and get your eye back on here. That's what you've got to do. That's the process of winning. You don't want to be your own worst enemy. You don't want little problems to knock you off track. You want to be teachable, coachable, flexible. You've got to be willing to change. All of us who've gone through this process, the hardest thing is being willing to admit things. And so let's just look at this. This is right off of YouTube. It's just there's all this pressure, you know? And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me and I can just feel it, like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless. And I don't know if it's going to stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most is that I don't know if it's ever going to stop. Yeah. Well, you do have a nail in your head. It is not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there... Stop I'll... trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing... You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. Was, see, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail See, out. you're not even listening now. Okay, fine. I will listen. Fine. It's just... Sometimes it's like there's this achy... I don't know what it is. And I'm not sleeping very well at all. And all my sweaters are snagged. I mean, all of them. Yeah, I, that sounds really hard. It is. Thank you. Ow! Oh, come on! Ow. If you would just... Don't! All right, folks, you don't want to be your own worst enemy. You don't want to be... Holding yourself back from getting where you want to go, continually failing time and time again simply because you won't admit the obvious.